Hi everyone, welcome back to From Eggs to Legs, a series that invites you to reconnect with the amazing wonders of the natural world. In our last episode, we watched the tree frogs and toads as they completed their metamorphosis and we built them new homes as they began to make their way onto land. In this episode, we will focus on the spotted salamanders. Be sure to stick around until the end because I'll give you a sneak peek of our next episode where I release the toads, bullfrogs, and salamanders back into the wild where I found them. So let's get started. April 24th was the day I found the eggs. I was so excited to bring them home and witness these amazing creatures hatch. As luck would have it, they began hatching the very next day. At feeding time, I like to use live brine shrimp. I also rinse it with fresh water first so I don't add salt to the tanks. It's really fun to watch them eat and it reminds me of popping corn. Once they began to get all four legs, I knew it was time to switch their food source to something a little more substantial. I began introducing bloodworms into their diet along with the brine shrimp. They were growing at different rates, so I wanted to be sure the little ones were still eating. I ran out of frozen bloodworms once so I substituted frozen brine shrimp and learned that they like that just as much. I also learned that the larger larvae enjoyed eating the smaller ones around them. I had to act quickly and I began separating them into different tanks based on their size. And that worked for a few weeks, but even still, they were growing at such different rates, one would experience a growth spurt and then begin to try and eat the smaller ones around it. I eventually had them separated into six groups based on their size, and I would transfer them from tank to tank when they'd experience a growth spurt and begin to outgrow their tank mates. It was really fascinating to watch them grow at such different rates. I also had a seventh container for the larvae that just weren't growing or who were victims of an attack by a larger salamander. These were the weakest and smallest of all that hatched. At some point, the feathery gills that they used to breathe underwater began to be absorbed back into their bodies. It was then that I knew it was time to provide some sort of land area for them. And it wasn't long until the first salamander came out of the water. After four months of caring for them underwater, it was really an odd sight to see one with its head above the water.
I needed more than just a rock for them to live on, so I set forth on modifying the tank that I had made for the toad tadpoles when they were ready to make their journey onto land. I wanted to provide more of a land area for the salamanders, so I replaced the larger pond with a smaller one. I also added plenty of hiding spaces for them. When I noticed their gills were shrinking, I would transfer them into their new pond in the larger tank. Just in time, because it wasn't but a few days until they began to emerge from the pond and make their way onto land. I had a system of tracking how many salamanders were out of the water. So whenever I added a salamander to the pond area, I changed the number on the front of the tank. In this case, I had two in the pond. On the side of the tank, I kept track of how many had emerged from the pond and were now hiding on land. I also made note of the date. On average, three to four came out every two days. This lasted for months. Today is September 29th, and I currently have 55 salamanders that are on land and ready to go back into the wild. There are still about a dozen in the water, but I suspect they will also be ready any day now. I've been caring for them for five months, and although I will be sad to see them go, the forest is where they really belong. So be sure to watch episode 7 of From Eggs to Legs, where I release the toads, bullfrogs, and salamanders back to where they belong. Thanks for watching.